Hi everyone, welcome back to the Babylon Nines. Today it's myself, Mike, and you also have Frankie, and we're going to be talking about the latest link, which is uh, Ibrahim Sangare of uh, PSV. So, guys, stick stick with us. We're going to do a quick little breakdown on Sangare and the possibility of him coming to West Ham. <laughs> Everyone. So, Frankie, we are looking at Ibrahim Sangaro, I think, for the second season in a row. Uh, what were your initial thoughts on the talks that we're maybe looking at him and the, I think the speculation that he has a 30 million, uh, 30 million euro release yeah. this summer? Yeah, I like the link. Uh, tough to get him if, if we do pull it off this summer. I think most people have now accepted Declan Rice is probably mm-hmm. going to be leaving this summer. So we're going to need to bring someone in that midfield that, you know, offers that defensive stability, but also is a bit more than that uh, and, and kind of can progress our play a bit more. So I like Sangare. I think people will maybe discredit some of the stuff he's doing just because of the league he's in, which is natural, but you can find some really good talent in other European leagues. And I think Sangare is one of those players. Yeah, as Man United have shown as well, they've gone and bought a few players from the Dutch league and they've settled in quite nicely. So <laughs> it, Maybe not Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not Anthony, but again, you know, just running around in a circle doesn't tend to get you very far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, uh, Sangari is a bit of a, is a different beast. Uh, obviously played at Toulouse. He uh, played there actually the same time as Issa Diop. Um, myself and Sloth, a number of years ago, even when he was at Toulouse, were calling for this guy to be signed from West Ham. And obviously he left for about, I think, eight million, nine million pounds, I think, from Toulouse to go to um, PSV. Uh, and he's just kind of gone from strength to strength. He's developed from a defensive midfielder into more box to box type, uh, kind of similar, uh, I guess, involvement or uh, evolution <clears throat> as we've seen with Declan Rice as well. But as you say, it's, it's big boots to fill when we talk about replacing Declan Rice. And we kind of put out a thread earlier this week where we was talking about, you know, potential players to replace Declan. And if you look at, you know, the just look at how he is in terms of measuring up against the other uh, say, uh, centre midfielders in the top five leagues. It's ridiculous, really. Um, and this is a season where probably widely, as fans, we probably said he's not been at his best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's been uh, off it. But yet, you know, you can just see from how much of it he is above the average percentile across multiple areas and disciplines. Uh, and then also... You know, a few of them is in the upper 90 percent uh, percentile as well. Obviously, quite telling from the heat map when you see just how much he is having to fend in on that left hand side. Um, but you know, it's some huge, huge boots to fill. Um, obviously, Sangare at least has the height <laughs> element yeah. in six foot three. But would you make of this, Frankie? This is how he is performing this season against other centre midfielders in the uh, era of Adizzi. It's quite substantial. Obviously, it's a much smaller pool set. So, yeah. obviously, uh, it's maybe a bit more inflated because it's a smaller pool set that he's working with. But even still, it's uh, pretty impressive, no? <laughs> uh, absolutely. I think that for, for me, what I would want to see from that type of midfielder is more of like what he can do in terms of possession. And you look at the possession column, you know, accurate forward passes, forward passes per 90, you know, passes to final third per, per 90. Like, he is a forward-thinking player. He's not someone that's going to just, you know, sit back, be happy to do that. He, he wants to be that box-to-box midfielder like you were mentioning. And, you know, even in, in the attacking contribution, you know, in the, what, top 10 percentile for goals and, you know, expected goals. So, it's just, yeah, it, it's, it looks really promising. Um, he's obviously got the defensive... Uh, you know, stability to his game as well. If you look at his defensive stats, might not be the best in the air, but again, he's not that type of player and, you know, he will control a midfield and that's exactly what we're going to miss. Declan, what what Declan Rice basically brings is that control in midfield. So I think from that point of view, that's where I'm kind of looking at, okay, okay, that's what he's going to bring to West Ham and, uh, you know, replace replace Rice in an inverted <laughs> comment. Yeah, I think you know, we've, we've also made the comment that Rice is quite a large figure at West Ham and we ideally need to probably bring in two players to compensate uh, for yeah. for the areas that he does. And obviously if that, they would then in turn mean we improve on Suchek because essentially we are 
not losing anything really from Rice if we've got two players who not only cover his piece, but then also improve on the outputs of Suchek, yeah. then in actual fact, we've improved, surely. And yeah. I know many people, as you said, will no doubt have questions against Zangari because it's a, it's a weaker league. But if you take those stats and you essentially levy like a 20%, I know it's a bit arbitrary, but you know, for argument's sake, a 20% kind of uh, increase in um, maybe ability or increase in, in strength in the league and apply that across yeah. his stats, he still measures incredibly well. You know, even if you went to 25%, he's still going to be across a lot of these measures. Yeah. Not only hitting what is actually the standard, you know, the average of the of all centre midfielders within the top five divisions, but exceeding immensely. And, you know, he was a very good player in League Earn as well for Toulouse. So it's not that we're buying a player who doesn't have experience in a top division. Yeah. Uh, he has been brilliant, essentially. I mean, he's, he's also only one year older than Rice as well. So does that, as you know, to take into consideration? Exactly. And, you know, he's at the right age. Um, we often talk about, you know, looking at younger players, but... Again, looking at players around 25, 26, there's nothing wrong with that. There's still some Absolutely good longevity. Not. I think when you look above that, you may, you may be starting to cut a bit of a rod for your own back because there's still a chance with Sangare, for instance, that has one or two good seasons at West Ham, a 30 million uh, kind of investment. Could it be potentially doubled? You know, the likes of United have looked at him in the past. Yeah. Uh, he has a good season, then you will see the likes of potentially Man United, um, maybe even Chelsea, although Chelsea's model have now changed. But, you know, even Newcastle with their new money, again, they're going to be looking at players uh, similar to Sangari to try and elevate them. And it's yeah, it's definitely a deal that I think really suits us because, again, we need that powerhouse, that person who can take the possession of the ball and drive with it, has a good, expansive um, kind of passing range as well. And he certainly has that. So, yeah, would you obviously if we have if we sell rice for, for the money that we anticipate, would you think that a 30 million euro by a signing of Sangare is a good start? Would you be happy with that as a replacement? And do you think I know we've talked about it a lot, saying that we need two players, but do you think it we do need two players if you get Sangare? Would you be happy with Sangare coming in for rice and the rest of the rice money being used elsewhere around the squad as opposed to bringing in two centre midfielders? No, I would look. I would look to 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 bring in a key component next to to Sangare. If we're going to play, if Paqueta's going to stay around next season, we're going to have Sangare Paqueta, and we've already seen that he's not really trusting Fornells or Lanzini anymore to play in that third role. It's usually Suchek, and personally, I don't really think we should be sticking around with Suchek anymore. I think we should maybe look to, to to kind of move him on as well in the summer. So we're going to need that kind of midfield presence next to them, and I think the big thing with replacing Rice is that presence in midfield and what Rice brings to that midfielder it is it's so big for West Ham and it's so big for us because he does such a lot of work in that midfield and again I feel like a lot of that also points to the fact of who he's played with being Suchek this season as well who's, who's really underperformed and hasn't really been able to show much of, of what he can do in terms of attacking sense so I think we would need another number eight in there um, we would need someone who can, can also control possession in midfield because we definitely lack that because when we're trying to play through the lines Rice will often get the ball and then there's not really much in front of him because Suchek's kind of just wandered off, you know, to try and anticipate crosses into the box from, say, a Cresswell or a Sofal. And then you've got Paqueta trying to drop deep. So we need someone in there that can link between that, you know, that midfield. So, yeah, I think for net, for, for Rice, Sangare is a, is a really good replacement. And at 30 million euros, I mean, it's going to be pretty tough to, to find someone at that kind of age with, you know, similar stats to what you've just put up there. So, I think the only risk people and fans, you know, myself included, who hasn't watched him a load, uh, would be because he's coming from from PSV and hasn't, you know, consistently done it at the top level um, and whether he'll be able to adapt quick enough to the Premier League. Because if we if we lose Rice, which is un very likely in the summer, we need someone to hit the ground running in that midfield. You know, we can't really have a slow burner like we've seen this season with some of our some of our new signings. So it's going to have to be a very key signing and someone that, you know, instantly adapts to the Premier League and is ready to, to kind of take on the the challenges of that of that division. Yeah, and I think <clears throat> the advantage is we know he's a centre midfielder. We know he can also play defensive midfield, so there's no chance of him playing as a number 10. 
or playing as a right back. So don't, don't rule it out. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that uh, you know he would settle quite well in the fact that he has come from the French league previously. Obviously, was in the French league before going to to Holland. Um, <clears throat> we've seen the likes of uh, Noni and Madueke, who's gone to Chelsea, is also settled in quickly. So players. Again, it depends on the player, but I do think he's one of those that will uh, come into the league and start moving forward quite quickly. Uh, I agree, probably need another player and a shameless plug. We actually did do a, trip, um, a nice little thread on that of players that should be coming in and saying that we think that we need at least two uh, to come in to cover Rice, um, which brilliantly brought up there by Frankie. It's on our Twitter page. We'll also link it in this video, so you know, please do go check it out. But I think, yes, the, the, the idea of being linked to Sangare is definitely a, a good one. It shows that we are thinking outside of just the, the standard top leagues. Um, there will be, no doubt, there will be interest from others. But it is ultimately, if we can win Europa Conference and stay up, then half the battle is there. You can write off the Premier League season because at the end of the day, players are going to go, well, new season potentially new manager, potentially new ownership. Yeah. But also, more importantly, it's a new club that's playing European football. So I think if we get there, then we have a very good chance of doing so. And you'd like to think, despite him being sold, players such as um, Allaire, um and players such as uh, Diop will, have, will talk to uh, Sangare. Obviously, Allaire is an international teammate. Uh, Diop also was at Toulouse at the same time as Sangari. So you'd like to think that they will have uh, good things to say about West Ham and that would also help us in the pursuit because there's no doubt he'll be reaching out to players in and around the league, people that have maybe been involved at West Ham that uh, he knows. So you'd like to think and hope they will put in a good word for us. But uh, yeah, I think it's fair to say, Frankie, we'd both be happy if Sangari came in. Um be nice to have a powerhouse who can pass, <laughs> yeah, who can shoot, and uh, also who is so resilient defensively as well. So, yeah, I think on that, we'll leave it there. Um, everyone, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed, please do like, please do subscribe. We're trying to get to 500, that's our next benchmark. Uh, hopefully, we'll get there soon. Uh, with you guys all kind of watching, subscribing, and sharing. Um, but until then, Frankie, there's one last thing, and that is. Come on, Come on your hands. hands.